Uh, Mr. Chairman, Governor Reagan, uh, James Thurber once said, he said, you know, uh, women are ruling the world. And the reason they're ruling the world is because they have so insecure a knowledge of history. He said, I, I found myself sitting next to a, a lady on an airplane the other day who all of a sudden turned to me. And she said, why did we have to pay for Louisiana when we got all the other states free? <laughs> <laughs> so he said, I, I explained it to her. He said, um, Louisiana was owned by two sisters called Louisi Louisa and Anne Wilmot. And they offered to give it to the United States, provided it was named after that, after them. That was the Wilmot Proviso. <laughs> <laughs> but General, Win but uh, President Winfield Scott refused to do that. That was the Dred Scott decision. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, <laughs> she said, well, that's uh, <laughs> that, <laughs> he said, that's all very well, but I still don't understand why we had to pay for Louisiana Purchase. Now, in intending no slur on my friend Ronald Reagan, the politician in America I admire most, his rendition of recent history and his general and generalities remind me a little bit about that explanation for the state of Louisiana having been incorporated into this country. He says, we, in fact, don't yeah. negotiate under threat. Yeah. And everybody here bursts out in applause. The trouble with that is that it's not true. We do negotiate under threats. 99% of all the negotiations that have gone on from the beginning of this world have gone on as a result of threats. As a result of somebody saying, As a result of somebody saying, if you don't give me a raise, I threaten to leave my job. That's a threat, isn't it? What, what do you call what we did to George III? It was a most convincing threat. The fact of the matter is that there are people in Panama who don't accept the notion of Governor Reagan about the undisputed, unambiguous sovereignty that the United States exercises over that territory. In 1948, the Supreme Court of the United States, in a decision of Amelia Brown versus Connell, made the following reference, quote, admittedly, Panama is territory over which we do not have sovereignty. 1948. In 1928, uh, in the Luckenbach Steam Company uh, case, the Canal Zone was referred to by the Supreme Court uh, as a, 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 a Canal Zone as a place in which there were foreign Ports. William Howard Taft said to Panama that we had, quote, not the slightest interest in colonizing. Uh, we, Dulla said to the United Nations uh, in 1946, Panama is sovereign. In 1936, we reaffirmed the titular sovereignty of Panama. Americans born of foreign parents in Panama don't become uh, Americans. The Supreme Court in 1948 said that admittedly territory over which we do not have sovereignty in a reference to Panama. We do have there the absolute right, which I do not deny and which my colleagues do not deny, to stay there as long as we want. But to say that we have sovereignty, as Governor Reagan has said, uh, is to belie the intention of the people who supervised our diplomacy in the early part of the century. And it is also to urge people to believe that we harbor an appetite for colonialism, which we shrink from, having ourselves declared in the Declaration of Independence principles that were not only applicable to people fortunate enough to be born in Massachusetts or in Connecticut or in New York or in Virginia, but people born everywhere. And all of a sudden we find that we resent it when people say that they're willing to fight for their freedom. There was fighting done within hundreds of yards of where we're standing here because the people of the South felt that they wanted their freedom from the Union. We fought back and it continues to be an open question 
whether there was su successful diplomacy in the course of resisting uh, that insurrection. But who is to doubt? Who is to doubt that the people who, who backed up their demands for freedom by saying they were willing to die for them are people for whom we should feel contempt? I don't feel that contempt, uh, Mr. Chairman, and I don't think the American people feel that contempt either. I think that Governor Reagan put his finger on it when he said, the reason this treaty is unpopular is because we're tired of being pushed around. We were pushed out of Vietnam because we didn't have the guts to go in there and do it right, just as Admiral McCain said. We're, we're, pre we're prepared, as it was said, to desert Taiwan because three and a half Harvard professors think that we ought to normalize our relations with Red China. <laughs> uh, we, we are prepared to allow 16 semi-savage countries to cartelize uh, the oil uh, that is indispensable to the entire industrial might of the West because we don't have a diplomacy that's firm enough to do something about it. And therefore, how do we get our kicks? How do we get our kicks? By saying no to the people of Panama. I say, I, I, I say that when, 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 I, when I am in a mood to say no, representing the United States, I want to be looking the Soviet Union in the face and say no to the Soviet Union next time it wants to send its tanks running over students who want to, a little freedom in Czechoslovakia. I want to say uh, no to uh, China when when it subsidizes genocide in Cambodia on a scale that has not been known in this century rather than simply forget that it exists. I don't want to feel that the United States has to affirm its independence by throwing away its powers to distinguish, by saying we, we must not distinguish between the intrinsic merits of rewriting the treaty in Panama uh, and pulling out of Taiwan because it is all a part of the same syndrome. Who in this room doubts that if the President of the United States weren't Jimmy Carter, but let us say Douglas MacArthur, uh, and if the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff uh, were Curtis LeMay, uh, <laughs> and if the Secretary uh, of State were Theodore Roosevelt, and this instrument was recommended to the Senate, who doubts that the conservative community of America would endorse it? We are allowing ourselves to be beguiled, not by our mind, not by a hard analytical analysis, certainly not by those ideals to which we profess allegiance every time we meditate on the Declaration of Independence. We're allowing ourselves to be pushed around because we express a quite understandable bitterness uh, at the way we have been kicked around. We ought to be mad not at the Panamanian students who are asking for nothing more than what our great-great-grandparents asked for. We ought to be mad at our own leaders for screwing up the peace which they have screwed up during the past 25 years. But do we want to go down and take it out on people who simply want to recover uh, the canal zone? What we have done to Panama is the equivalent of taking the falls away from Niagara. Is it, is, it, is it the kind of satisfaction that re we really feel we are entitled to uh, to proceed on that basis in order to uh, assert a sovereignty which is in any case not a part of the historical tradition on the basis of which the Panama Canal was opened? No. Let's listen to reason. Let's recognize, uh, as Admiral Zumwalt has so effectively said, that we are so impoverished militarily, as a result of so many lamentable decisions, that we need the Panama Canal and that we need the Panama Canal with a people who are residents of the Panama Canal, who understand themselves as joined with us in a common enterprise. Because when they look at the leaders of the United States, they can recognize that not as a result of our attempt to curry favor with anybody, but as a result of our concern for our own self-esteem, we are big enough to grant little people what we ourselves fought for 200 years ago.